Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode six of the Hungry People Podcast. It is your boy, Michael Patrick Buckley, and I'm here with my co-host, AJ Dybka, AJ the Killer, the man, the man, the man, AJ. On today's episode, AJ and I will be discussing, and I know this is a bit of a controversial topic, but we're discussing sugar, 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 sugar. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there who are, uh, who are afraid of sugar, uh, especially in uh, certain communities. Um, and AJ and I, we're going to touch on that today and give our thoughts and opinions on, on, uh, sugar. Um, and AJ, uh, it's been about, I mean, two or three weeks, a couple weeks since we've done a podcast. Uh, what have you been up to, man? Yeah, it's been, I think almost a month. It's been like at least three weeks. Yeah. At least three weeks. Well, I know you were here a couple weeks. I mean, Four, it might have been four weeks. No, it was probably three weeks ago you were here, and we didn't do anything there. So it might have been over a month since we've done a podcast. Yeah. So, yeah, since I left MPs, I headed down to Chattanooga, Tennessee. I stayed with uh, my best friend, my cousin Cody, for two weeks, spent some time with family, you know, was on the, on the track a little bit, going in the nature walks and going in the little waterfalls and rivers and the mountains and stuff, which is, I, I really nice. love. And then since then, I left and uh, I headed down to Naples, Florida. Wow. And I actually had a bunch of car issues and I, I put all over my Instagram story, but I was like breaking down every two hours. <laughs> and my car steaming or smoking and I'm on the phone with Lou Corona and he's like, <laughs> he's like, see, see if the That's rubber incredible. hoses are detached. So Lou Corona is not only giving me uh, some nutrition advice, he's also giving me car advice. <laughs> wow. So he knows a lot about cars too? Or is he just kind of, so. or, or were you just were you just on the phone with him and just he just was randomly helping you? So he he knows a decent he knows more than me, uh, and yeah, I just happened to be on the phone with him when it happened. So it was wow. Funny. But wow. after a long long process of leaving Cody's on a Sunday night, I ended up in Naples. Mm -hmm. I think it was. Um, oh my God! Look. Oh, he's calling you right now. <laughs> what are the chances? Luke Corona, the GOAT, the legend Luke Corona is calling AJ while we are yeah. doing, while we are running episode six of the podcast. That is <laughs> incredible. Funny. That's incredible. Luke, yeah, Corona, sorry. It was, it was, uh, we got, sorry, we got more important things right back now. in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I finally got to Naples and I'm staying at a good friend's house, going to the beach every day, um, you know, sticking to eating well and just doing my best to take care of myself nice man. so yeah and i've actually been as you guys probably know doing tons of recordings interviewing people just because mm -hmm. i have more time on my hands while i'm mm -hmm. looking for um more steady work and then doing more to get more coaching clients and things like that so it's going pretty well yeah aj i will say it's been considered yeah. yeah it's been really it's been really great seeing the interviews that you've been posting on our youtube channel i've really enjoyed them and uh i know that they're influencing a lot of people out there so great job with that and Pretty happy with them yeah yeah and i really appreciate you going out of your way and taking the time to do that um so thank you for that aj yeah of course um, i can't wait to see you do the same yeah 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 i have some people that i would like to interview um on the youtube channel and definitely definitely want to interview on the podcast too um <clears throat> i uh i interviewed someone right before this i keeping it a surprise from mp and well. <laughs> but uh you guys will see that pretty soon i'm sure Awesome. Awesome. Great job. So yeah, let's get started on this talk on, um, on sugar. You wanted to start yeah, with, I think, I think that some of the main topics and some, some of the main discussions people want to know is like, mm -hmm. you know, is sugar healthy? Mm -hmm. Is it bad? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's different types, you know, is, is one sugar better than the other? What about mm -hmm. fruit sugar? Does sugar make you fat? Does sugar give you diabetes? Um, and those are some of the basic stuff. Is there anything I missed? Um, <clears throat> Sugar in the body, uh, like breaking the breakdown of sugar. We could talk about that as well. Um, also, I just want to let everyone know that I am using the, uh, the internet at this cafe I'm at. So if there's a lot of noise, sorry about that. It <laughs> won't happen again. Hey, AJ, we just really appreciate you taking the time and uh, just doing the best you can to make this happen. And I know uh, I know there's no Wi-Fi at uh, your residential location where you're living right now. Um, so thank you just for doing the best you can to, to make this yeah, happen. Of course. Yeah. Don't worry. The mic, the mic will be back guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's just start with, uh, different types of sugar. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about like fruit or starch or yeah, let's, let's um, give it a really broad, basic understanding yeah, of like, yeah. there's the traditional processed sugar that everyone knows of. Mm -hmm. 
There is, um, which is table sugar. Mm -hmm. There's fruit sugar. So if you're eating fruits and vegetables, vegetables can contain a small amount. Fruit is mostly fructose and glucose. Um, you have starches. So starches are carbohydrates, which are more complex. And they break down into sugar ultimately, right? And um, yeah, then, of course, you have like candy bars. You have, you know, what people are synonymous with sugar, ice cream, cake, candy, these types of things. And we want to make, a, want to make it clearer on kind of the breakdown of how you should potentially look at these things instead of how the mainstream is getting you to look at them. Right. Does that makes so, sense? Yeah, for sure. So um, I feel like when the mainstream media or people on the news or even, even your friends nearby, close by, they always talk about sugar. Oh, sugar's bad, sugar this. And I feel like they're mostly talking about uh, the sugar, like you said, in candy bars and candy and this and that. And I just like from a, from a, an actual standpoint of looking at the food itself, um, you can't compare like the sugar and fruit to the sugar that you would get in a candy bar or a Milky Way or a lollipop. You know, there's definitely, there's, there's a clear difference in that. Um, and with the, with the fruits, you're also getting a lot of these vital nutrients, these antioxidants. And, um, you don't get any of that when you eat a candy bar. Um, and I know just from my, uh, understanding and learning of, uh, of the topic, um, the nutrition, the antioxidants, the fiber, the polyphenols, all that along with the sugar helps it helps the body take on the sugar much easier, you know? So you're not just getting these crazy insane spikes of blood sugar that you might get when you eat candy bars you know um aj do you have any thoughts on that yeah i mean i i didn't know you would be like oh the fiber helps with the sugar <laughs> well yeah that, i mean that's what, that's what i learned from a lot of the uh, a lot of the doctors you yeah. know it's, well i would say that the most mis uh, common the most common misconception mm -hmm. is the fact that people look at candy bars and ice cream and donuts and they only attribute it being bad because of the sugar. Mm -hmm. And um, sorry if you've said this, I was, uh, but the fat, there is so much fat in these yeah, products. For sure. And it's like these are junk products and everyone blames the sugar, but also like all the chemicals in it, all the yeah. fat, all the dairy, all the hormones, all the stimulants, all the cacao or the mm -hmm. <laughs> powder. And it's, uh, that's one of the big parts of it that I feel really misrepresents the sugar. Mm hmm. Because I do think, in my point of view, I do think sugar, processed sugar is problematic. Yeah. But when people are blaming candy bars and they only think it's the sugar, I think they're missing out on a big avenue of what really is behind this. Right. And I think that the chemicals, meaning the preservatives, the sprays, the, you know, all this garbage, the synthetic garbage in the mm -hmm. food is the really the bigger bulk of it, mm -hmm. as well as the dairy products in it. You know, the out things that are common allergies to people, like small food allergies that people don't even know that they have, that they're reacting to creating inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that should be much more of a discussion. Right. Because cause just as you know, plenty of people go sugar free, but they're still eating candy bars and they're still eating, you know, ice creams and sodas mm -hmm. that are sugar free. And everyone right. knows the sugar free soda is way worse <laughs> than the sugar soda. <laughs> So it's, it's right. Like you're still getting the, the chemicals and all the, probably the toxic heavy metals with that as well, you know? Or just, um, yeah, it's just not favorable. Yeah. I remember watching a, I think it was a keto documentary on Netflix with my dad and they were just talking about how there's all these different kinds of sugar products in different foods, you know? Right. Um, but they didn't really talk about the chemicals that were in there. And once again, they're, they're blaming the sugar. And like, I'm not saying that, that the sugar that's in these products is healthy and that we should be consuming them on a day-to-day -day basis. But <laughs> the, like you say, the blame is always, always the sugar. You know, it's not the oil. It's not um, the, the chemicals. Um, and that's the thing is like, you, you eat a donut that is full of, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what kind of oil they use, but it's, it's full of some kind of fat. There's some yeah, fat it's in fried. there. It's a yeah. fried food. Yeah, it's exactly. Um, Everyone agrees fried food is not good. Right. So, but, pe but when people look at a donut, 
they say, oh, that's like sugar, you know? Yeah. But it's it's actually fat. It's probably it might be more fat actually. Right. <laughs> so why why is sugar getting the blame for all of this? You know? Um, and then once and then it's just that trickle down effect of like, oh, well, now you have potatoes, they have sugar, so they're bad. Then you have fruit potato or sugar right. bad. and all of a sudden the uh, the donut is associated with the apple and yeah. now you have a problem right right and i think that someone i think we have the camps we have like the vegan and the, especially the high carb camp and then we have the keto and the high animal product camp yeah and really i think the person in the middle who is like the donut no not only has sugars in it but it also has it's fried and it has the the, the garbage ingredients right <laughs> And all the diabetic experts would agree in terms of the plant-based doctors that when you combine all of the sugar with all of the fat, yeah. that's the real dynamite. I mean, right. you're going to see a lot when people go low fat, they feel better or low <laughs> sugar, they feel better. But because really, I think it's when we're just mixing all of this garbage together mm -hmm. that, and you have a weaker system, you're going to see more problems. Yeah. You're going to have um, insulin resistance. You're going to have this type of stuff. Right. So just speaking on insulin resistance and diabetes a little bit, um, I'm going to say a few things here, a few statements here. So it's actually ironic. I was on Twitter yesterday and there's a doctor, Dr. Danielle Bellardo, I think her name is. And she, she's a bit controversial because she's just like, so on evidence, so scientific, so, like show me this, show me the studies, show me this, show me that, you know, which I get, I'm cool. That's awesome. You know, do your thing, girl, do your thing. And I saw a tweet from her yesterday and, or two days ago, whenever it was. And it was like, you can still get diabetes on a high carb diet, if you over consume calories. And then this other doctor, Avi Vitterman, his name is, he was like, basically was saying the same thing. And, um, I mean, the thing is, is like, wow, how much can you really eat? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, even still, it's like to over consume fruit, you have to eat just an insane amount of fruit. And I don't even want to eat that much. You know, it's common with fruit and starch that it's, it is satiating. It's all, it's very filling. Yeah. So, so my next point on that is like, okay, so if over consuming your food is the cause to diabetes, then, um, where does, where does fruit play in that? You know, where, where's the role of fruits and even vegetables play in that? And you don't see people out there eating 3000 calories, 4,000 calories of fruit and, and getting diabetes. If anything, you see it actually helping them improving their diabetes. You know, you look at mastering diabetes and uh Robbie. all in all the testimonials they've had you know um it's just it's really it's really cool to see that but um Actually, I, I just I, I need to i need to jump on that unless you want to no no uh, no if you want to if you have anything to say if you, you, you can chime in yeah. you're welcome to because because i uh i believe that a lot of our audience is going to become people who not only are into this lifestyle like us already mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of people who are brand new to just the fact of food has anything to do with health right don't yeah even make the connection right so i want to say it for the people out there that reversing type 2 diabetes has been documented and is now being practiced over and over again by clinicians mm -hmm. and for those of you who think that you cannot reverse your type 2 diabetes uh in, you're being misled mm -hmm. you know i hopefully mp and i both get to have Robbie Barbaro on. No, we're, we're going diabetes. to get him. We're going to get him on. It's not yeah. a hopefully we're going to get him on whether it's you interview right. him or whatnot. Like we're going to get him on. <laughs> yeah. Or Cyrus. So basically. Yeah. 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 For sure. They both run something called mastering diabetes and they worked for the forks over knives company in helping people to overcome type, type two diabetes. And not only that, helping people with type one greatly reduce their insulin needs by using a plant-based nutritious low processed garbage, low fat vegan diet, mm -hmm. high in fruits, high in starches. So, you know, it, people are, people are blind and do not know the fact that they can not only improve their diabetes, that you can reverse your type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. It's very important that you know that so that you don't feel as though you are just trapped in this cycle. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I used to uh, work at Elevate Nutrition, we had a woman who was type two diabetic and she would come in and we would give her a little bit of counseling and advice and books and information. And she's like, I'm eating pasta, low fat, I'm eating rice, I'm eating fruit. And my diabetes is getting better, 
and every single doctor ever has told me the opposite <laughs> in all of I'm, I'm feeling better i'm losing weight yeah and a part a big part of type 2 diabetes is losing that body fat so now you're having less insulin resistance mm -hmm. so if you're someone who's on the borderline you're having blood sugar issues you're having weight issues it's really important to not only you know, possibly reduce the fat, but reduce the fat in your body. If your body fat is reduced, you're going to be metabolizing your sugars a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I would definitely check out Mastering Diabetes and their work and see what, uh, what they have done. It's, it's, it's truly incredible. And I know they're, they're helping uh, plenty, 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 a plethora of people out there. It's really great to see. And it's good for this community yeah. too, you know. Um, and you have people like Dr. Neil Barnard, who I've met in uh, Maryland's, who wrote the book on reversing clinical type two diabetes yeah. with a plant-based diet. Yeah. And you have people like Dr. John McDougal, you know, legend in the field. Oh, he's a beast. You, like you're just, you're just being lied to you are <laughs> yeah. like, or you're not, or they're not providing the information. See, there's a misconception. Another one. Yeah. A lot of people think that doctors do know that you can get better, but they think oh, the patients are lazy. The patients, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to do it. So what's the point in telling them? Mm -hmm. Well, what about the ones that would do something if they knew about it, but they don't know about it or, right. you know, they're, it's just unfortunate. Yeah. It's just, it's just like most people are just going to their doctor and just asking for the medication or for more insulin, you know, yeah. whatever it needs. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I think the price of insulin has gone through the roof since, yeah. um, the new person came into president. And there is financial incentives to, prescribe right it's, it's not a it's not like a conspiracy anymore it's just how it is right um yeah that's that's a shame and if i'm not mistaken uh type 1 diabetes i don't think that can necessarily be reversed if i'm not mistaken right. um and i think that's a genetic that, that's more of a genetic yeah. condition so from um, the research that i've done you know according to people like john McDougal and a lot of the people in this camp mm -hmm. it seems as though there's probably a genetic weakness possibly, but they said that it seems as though when children are very young and still forming, mm -hmm. some for some that have weaker genetics, when they're introduced to dairy products, since it is, uh, some recognize it as a foreign substance. Mm -hmm. So the pancreas actually tries to attack those cells oh, wow. and it ends up damaging its own pancreas. And then the oh, insulin wow. is not being released as well. But mm -hmm. once it's done, you know, I've never heard of anyone doing it. Uh, and clinically, I don't think it's something that's been proven at all. Yeah. But you can definitely lessen your need mm -hmm. of the insulin you take. What about people who are like football players and big time athletes? You know, like, do you think they could really um, eat like a fruit based diet? I mean, honestly, I think they could do like a, a high starch diet. You know, like a high carb, high starch diet, lots of greens, vegetables, potatoes, um, and then definitely, of course, some fruit. But I would question how how the performance would be if they did like a high a high fruit diet. You know, and I'm and I'm talking specifically like football players, basketball players, baseball players. You're not I, gonna like my answer. Yeah, well, it's fine. Your answer is I, it's fine. But like, I know there's a guy, um, Mark Andrews, plays with the Baltimore Ravens. I've had him on my fantasy team the past two years. <laughs> And like, I just remember like watching them play and he's like on the sidelines. Cause he has, I, th I think he has type one diabetes. I'm not sure if it's type one or type two, but like, he's like going and get chat, getting, going to get his blood sugar tested out just to make sure that he's okay to play, you know? And, um, yeah. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. <laughs> um, well, I just watched the game changers documentary on Netflix. So yeah. it clearly shows you can be strong on a vegan diet. It clearly yeah, shows yeah, totally. eating I mean, burritos and. Yeah, look at MP. He's an animal. <laughs> but as far as like being a football player and eating most of your calories from fruit, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that you're going to have a mental shift and be like, what am I doing? <laughs> Tackling other guys and giving myself brain damage. You're going to be like, I'm going to get more into like other things that make more sense. <laughs> no offense, football players. No, I, I see what you're saying. Um, no, yeah. I mean, I think it's very common that like the average football, professional football player, like has like the shortest lifespan of any athlete, not yeah. only because of the injuries, but because of the way that they eat chicken wings and right. whatever it is to get big and strong. There's mm -hmm. a price sometimes that comes with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that the best thing that we could do is mediate and like 
meat, meat in the halfway where you, if you're eating these foods, at least eat healthy foods as well. Totally. Totally. Um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So I just, just don't play football. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that, like, um, I think there's a certain thing that comes along with getting really healthy to where you will see things more clearly right. and you won't want to put yourself in potential harm because mm -hmm. it really like over, over years and decades of tackling, I mean, even uh, oh, yeah. Joe Rogan talks about it with all the concussions in MMA and right. it's just, it's, is it worth it? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it is. And I think that the better you feel, the more you pick up on that. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, now, you know, Lewis house, he's retired from football mm -hmm. and he puts his energy into the school of greatness and interviewing amazing people. And I don't think he has any desire to go back to like getting smacked in the head. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that, that just, I can't imagine that feeling good, but Hey, guys are crazy. Guys are really like, there's just something wrong with them and they just, they just want to go head on head contact with people, you know? So, Hey, if that's, if that's you and that's your life, then do it, man. You know, people yeah, make millions off playing football. Like I, I don't mean to be disrespect, disrespectful to anyone because like I could never do what they're doing. You know, mm -hmm. it's amazing. They're some of the best athletes in the world, whatever it is, boxing, uh, football, you know, baseball, all these things. Right. But there is, everyone knows there's a price to pay with some yeah. of these things, you know? You know, even speaking of a price to pay, um, while, while we're on the episode of Sugar, I'll even say myself, <clears throat> last year, I, I didn't really do an experiment, but um, it's when I founded Durian Rider, and he's just huge on the refined sugar, which is like, it's insane. It's crazy, you know? Yeah, this guy is like four cups of sugar into your yeah. smoothies. Yeah, and I... um. I've experimented a little bit with doing that and adding the sugar to my smoothies, adding it to my fruit. Um, so I was on that train for a while, but I, I kind of got off it because I did see some issues. And like you were saying, like you're going to see potential issues. And I, and I know early in the podcast, you were talking about how sugar, or you, you said how it could be problematic, you know? And for me, I did see problems. Um, but I think a lot what? of that just like I had, I had issues in my throat. It just like felt like there was just something, something so weird there. And I just like, I couldn't, I couldn't get, I couldn't get rid of it, you know? Um, and it was just so annoying and I just didn't want to have to deal with it anymore. And, um, this actually goes back to, uh, episode three, where I shared my story. Um, I think it's called like a serofragile spasm or something like that. Um, I can't really pronounce the word. Um, I actually put it, I actually put the word in the description of episode three. Um, and I reached out to that nutritionist and I, and he said to me, he said, Hey, for anything spasm related, it's usually minerals. It's usually electrolytes. And at that point in time, I wasn't like, I was just so like high carb, like legit. I was just eating like white rice and like fruit and white and sugar, you know, and juice. And I was doing like some vegetables, but like I was doing no salads whatsoever, you know? So there's clearly you can, you can tell that, that there's going to be some kind of problem. There's going to be some issue that comes along. Yeah, I mean, for some people, it might not. For me, it, I had an issue, you know? And, like, I can't even lie. Like, once I started pounding the salads and getting those greens and minerals back in me, like, it started to get better and better and better and better. And now, like, I'm feeling awesome right now. But I will say, when I was on that lifestyle, I had, like, I don't, I don't even want to call it a lifestyle, you know? I had, like, I had not Oh my gosh. My energy was, my energy was crazy. Like I was biking. I had so much motivation to get out there and, and just get after it, you know? Um, but even still, I still had that same motivation today, you know? And then another story I want to, I want to say, um, I was at AJ's house and, uh, AJ actually gifted me some cane sugar. <laughs> uh, so thank you for that. Actually, I still have it because yeah. I haven't used it since I've been there. Yeah, you came by like right after Christmas, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, I had, I had mangoes and, uh, uh, peeled them off, put them in a bowl. And I was like, this, they, this, these, these don't taste good at all. So I was like, screw it. I added some sugar to it. And, uh, I, the mangoes were delicious and I pounded the mangoes and then I went to the gym in like, I, I just, I'll always remember this workout. It was like the most intense, insane workout I've ever had in my life because I was just like, so in the zone. I had so much energy. I was like, so pumped up. I, I was like, oh my gosh, this feels so good. But, but my way of looking at that is like, I don't know if I'm going to feel that every single time. If I add sugar to my food, 
And once again, it became problematic for me. So I just stay away, you know? Yeah, and, it's interesting uh, because uh, it's interesting you say that because I think, well, I think it's a great point to say maybe you wouldn't feel that way every time because, you know, maybe you will. But for people that don't drink coffee, then they have it after a long time. You might feel really good that first yeah, time. Like, yeah. oh, man, I should do this more often. But then you get dropped off the next right. few days. So right. I think you probably would be fine for the most part. Yeah. It seems as though you have really good sugar metabolism and, mm -hmm. you know, you have it fuels you it just it's fuel for you yeah for sure and, like uh, it, it actually works it actually works in my favor but for someone like you and i yeah well i will say even back in the day when i started doing raw 204 and i was doing mostly bananas and rice uh with harley's encouragement i started adding sugar to the smoothie because i'm like mm -hmm. everything else he's saying is helping me you know yeah sweet water sugar <laughs> when i would do that i would notice that i would just not feel as good i didn't know what it was really but then down the road, I started to try it again and I would feel awful. And it's so funny because like a lot of people will say, oh, it's, you know, Harley especially would just be like, oh, it's because you're not fit enough or whatever. <laughs> but the thing is, let's say I was making fitness progress when I would add the sugar, I would get into such a fight or flight that I wouldn't sleep and then I wouldn't be able to train anyway. So uh, wow, I think that for... I think for some people, if it actually could be helping you, especially if you're an athlete and you're performing well, it mm -hmm. could be that extra edge, at least mm -hmm. momentarily. But there's plenty of people out there that aren't only eating sugar in the form of donuts and ice cream, but they're eating it in, let's say, a cleaner way that do right. feel worse from it. And right. I would say that I would be one of those people. And it's funny because if I have, if I take coconut sugar, since we're now we're getting diverse. Yeah, let's things. let's get into it a little bit. <laughs> if I take coconut sugar and I take cane sugar, I have two very separate reactions, despite them being one for one in calories of sugar. So, so here's an example. I would make this green shake with curium, this uh, you know, power shake, and I would add coconut sugar to it and I would drink it and it's delicious. And if I did that with the cane sugar, not only was I in fight or flight, but it would hurt my teeth really badly. If I took the coconut sugar and I used the spoon and ate it out of the bag, <laughs> it wouldn't hurt my teeth at all. But if I put a little bit of that sugar on some like ice cream or mangoes, the cane sugar, it would be like, oh my God, my teeth hurt so bad. Oh so hardly. And for the people out there saying sugar, you know, it's exactly the same. Right. I don't know. It seems like it's having a different process. It literally, as soon as it enters my mouth. Yeah. Now and uh, and Harley says if you think there's a difference, it's in your head. I don't know how much more physical that could be. I I don't know. Yeah, I mean if you're if you're in pain and you and you're just feeling all these consequences. Am I just thinking I'm in pain? Am I just yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's just that's something else. Um, so like for people out there, um, like obviously we're not recommending eating sugar, like refined sugar, you know, but like. Is it, would you kind of say for them, it's based off of like a feel thing, you know? So like, if they feel fine eating it, I know like for me, like I, like once again, I had, I, I experienced these issues, but I ever did a little bit, you know, and I didn't, I didn't balance everything out. Um, but like, I know now, like if I was training for something, like maybe a marathon or a cycling competition or whatever, you know, um, I feel like I would definitely get an extra boost and a level, a little bit of a level up if I would do more like refined sugar and I'm not, I'm, we're not just, and I, for me, I'm not saying like granulated sugar that they make in a crap hole and wherever, you know, and they treat it like crap. But like, if I would do it, I would prefer to use a sugar like coconut sugar, you know, or, or even organic cane sugar being better than like domino sugar. Or whatever yeah. that, like <laughs> right. Um, like less caking agents, less bleaching agents, less preservatives. Right. If you're going to use it, use it in the cleanest form that you can. Right. But like, um, I, I agree. I think that if you're getting to a certain level of performance, you're going to see benefit in mm -hmm. terms of energy. Mm -hmm. But if you and, feel it and you feel worse, I don't feel like you have to beat yourself up about it. Yeah. And also too, it's like, if you already have the energy like, and you already have working. the drive and you have the passion to do what you do in life, then there's no need to add any of that whatsoever. You know, just stay away. Maybe it's a flavor. Like I don't have any problems with yeah. people having oatmeal and putting some sugar on it for right. flavor. But if you're making the, 
800 calories of it from sugar, I think it's problematic. Yeah. You know what? I'm really happy you said that because I remember Dr. McDougal speaking on that and saying like, hey, if you got to add sugar to your oatmeal to get that starch down, do it. I'm not like, I'm not worried about the sugar. The sugar isn't going to cause that many issues for you. He's worried about all the other crap, you know, yeah. um, which I thought that was like really, really not. I mean, I was going to say inspiring, but <laughs> it's just it's like, it's just, awesome. yeah, it's just, it's just really, it's really cool to hear him say that, you know, and, um, and, and McDougal actually, he didn't directly say Harley by name, but he's like, there are people out there that use my name and use my defense of sugar uh, as a means to add cups and cups of sugar to your food. Yeah. And don't recommend that. <laughs> it, McDougal doesn't say, Hey, do this with your sugar. He says like, okay, yeah. you want to do it. Yeah. He says that essentially the carbohydrates that are in starch are sugar. We right. are sugar creatures and fruit is good, but that doesn't mean to add refined sugar to everything. Right. And um, for those of you that are a little, I don't know if it's getting louder and louder. It feels like it's getting louder. It is a me. little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> but uh, we kind of skipped over a little bit with what actually causes diabetes. Because again, everyone thinks it's the sugar. It's the sugar. Right. But really what it is, is the insulin is having a hard time getting the sugar out of your blood into the cell for energy. And if it's just sitting in your bloodstream, that means you have to like pee it out or you're just having this accumulation of sugar, mm -hmm. which is creating inflammation as it sits in the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So that's why one of the reasons why uh, diabetics will chronically urinate so much. They'll have an urgency to pee because they just have all this undigested uh, sugar or unmetabolized sugar. Unmetabolized is a better word, right? Yeah. And, you know, at least according to the plant based doctors, that talk about reversing it clinically, it's a fat issue because when you lose that body fat, when you lower the amount of oils, free oils, animal products, these things that make it harder for mm -hmm. sugar to get into your cell, whether it's coming from processed sugar, <coughs> candy bars, fruits, starches, whatever it is, regardless, you need to address the, the absorption issue, the metabolism issue. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so anything to add to that? yeah, 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 I do. Um, I, I think it's really interesting because uh, I see a lot of people in the, in the keto community. They're like so against sugar, no sugar, no sugar, no sugar, you know? And, and there are people who say that like, oh, I've reversed my type 2 diabetes on a keto diet. And um, they're just doing all fat, all fat, all fat. And they say like, oh, my, well, I, I get no blood sugar spikes. My blood sugar stays, you know, normal the entire time. And it's kind of like, okay, yeah, well, I guess, yeah, if you don't need any sugar, then you won't get any blood sugar spikes, you know? <laughs> um, but then it's like, once they immediately have sugar, it's going to cause issues. You can yeah. imagine that. So it's like, You're it's almost like they're giving their, yeah. yeah, it's almost like they're just giving themselves some sort of diabetes um, in a way, but they're also not getting diabetes because they're not eating any sugar. So I don't know, you know, if you're someone who wants to go on a keto diet for the rest of your life and that's how you want to live, like, hey, God willing, you do what you got to do, you know? Yeah, well, I wouldn't even um, mind uh, slightly defending the keto people in the sense that if you go on a quote-unquote healthier type of low-carb diet and you're mm -hmm. eating more whole natural foods, you stop eating a lot of processed foods, and in the process you do lose weight right. and you feel healthier and, and then you handle things better, mm -hmm. I think that that is better than a standard American. Yeah. And, that's um, and the big part is the losing of the weight in a healthy, sustainable way. Yeah. See, and also too, like, like you were saying, like the people who do go on those keto diets, they, they are getting rid of, of the junk. And I feel like that's, that's where a lot of these different ways of eating compare. Like they're getting rid of all the crappy foods, all the processed foods, all the candy bars and this and that. Um, and they're seeing great results. And it's not, it doesn't mean like, oh my gosh, I can never have a lollipop ever again, or I can't have this. It's just like, just for... <laughs> Like, I'm not here to tell you what to do, but like <laughs> reduce it a little bit, you know? Um, and once again, I mean, people are seeing great results. Um, but one of the issues that I see with a lot of people talking about diabetes and like eating sugar is that they say, oh my gosh, well, like, why would I eat sugar? Cause it just raises my blood sugar and it stops. They stop right there. Okay. So it raises your blood sugar. And then what, you know, does it just stay there forever? Like, 
Or did I feel it shoot up super high or did yeah, it just shoot up? Yeah, right. Well, like normal. Right, exactly. So it's like, how high is it going? And then is it coming back down to baseline? And um, I feel like if your body is using the sugars properly and it's using the insulin properly, then should there be any reason to worry? And I don't know. You know, I, I would probably say no. You know, so it's like, okay, yes, your blood sugar goes up. But then it comes back down, you know, um, and it's funny. There's a video. Um, I forget what it's called, um, but it's about this guy going like no sugar for 30 days or something. And um, and he was talking about how when he didn't have any sugar. Oh, my gosh. I forget what he was talking about. Crap. <laughs> well, I actually had it on my story and I was saying like, yeah, well, like this guy's eating these foods. And he's creating insulin resistance to himself. And then he's eating sugar, but then he's, then he's getting like blood sugar class crashes and he's blaming the sugar, but really he's actually insulin resistant because he's of the, of, of the other foods he's eating, you know? So it's like, if you want to eat a diet that's based around eating a lot of fruit, which is yes, it's, it's high in sugar and you're in, you, you, you eat a lot of potatoes and whatnot too. And you want your body to utilize those as best as possible. I mean, it's probably best to, limit and i'm not saying like completely get rid of but like limit other foods you know or you can just take a balanced approach and just eat like a simplified moderate caloric diet and just eat how you want you know um so yeah i don't so, know if you had yeah with the it's so with the fruit diet let's talk about a fruit diet for a little bit mm -hmm. you see lots of people having a lot of benefits from doing a fruit-based diet, right? But you also see a lot of problems that come along with it. Um, with all the people that you see reversing issues, you see, you know, probably just as many having problems with weight, problems with teeth, problems with, you know, hair, thyroid, you know, um, uh, libido, things like this. So mm -hmm. it's it's interesting. Potentially, I think hair that- loss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think that a fruit diet can be done. It can be super duper healthy. And maybe it is one of the most natural ways that you could possibly eat. Maybe one of the most healthiest ways you could possibly eat. But I will say this. I think it's one of the most problematic because I think that if you have an issue, it will show on the fruit diet. And what I mean isn't you have to detox. Sometimes you do. What I mean is... If, you're, if your adrenals or your um, pancreas is really kind of messed up and all of a sudden you're just going to shove tons of sugar into you mm -hmm. and your system is not ready to handle that, it will stress your body out more. And it's not a, one of those things that you should push through until you get to the other side. You know, if you're getting worse and worse and worse and worse, that's not a good sign. That's not mm -hmm. a detox sign. A detox sign is oh man, I feel pretty tired today. I'm feeling maybe day four, you're feeling good. And then day five, it's like you have some down moments. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's exceptions to this rule. Of course, there's people that, you know, went through a lot to get to the other side. But when Harley was doing fruit, a fruit-based diet, I feel as though he was one of the most successful people that will ever do the diet. That's at least on social media because he did not skip over the sleep. I think if you're not mm -hmm. getting not only adequate sleep, but really as much as you possibly could need, you're not going to metabolize those sugars as efficiently. And it's going to show. It's going to show in your skin. Mm -hmm. It's going to show over time wearing you out because I think you can get a little bit more away with some of these other ways of eating um, without having to address all of the other needs but with a fruit mm. diet i feel as though you have to have the exercise the sleep the water everything on point or you're gonna not have the results that in the long term that you should see also I feel like to, it's gonna stress the body out a little more than it helps yeah well to add on to that to all that stress that you're talking about there most people are doing a lot of fasting on the fruit diet too so like yeah. they're doing 16 17 18 19 hours sometimes dry fasting and i know there's people out there who like too. yeah exactly and i know there's people out there who say like oh like don't demonize dry fasting you know it's it's helped me heal all this stuff but what about the people who like have seen worse issues 
on dry fasting yeah. and fruit diets, you know? Um, and unfortunately people will tell them like, Oh, you just did it wrong. When sometimes it was just the wrong thing to do. Right. People can't admit to this. They think only dry fasting is only good or yeah. water fasting is only good. Right. But yeah. Not in a, not in a, if you're in a depleted state and you go on a water fast and mess up your electrolytes, you could give yourself a heart attack. You can, mm -hmm. you know, you could slip into a diabetic coma. You can, or not even if you're diabetic, you just have your blood sugar drop so low mm -hmm. that you get into danger. So like, yeah. So, it's just, yeah. well, I mean, I think, I think it's for some people, they might not say that like fasting is a stress in the body, but I, I do believe that fasting is a stress on the body, you know, not giving yourself the fuel and the nutrition to go about your day. I mean, it, it, it can be tough, you know, and, um, and, and, I, and it I goes that, back to like what you're doing in that day. Not, not yeah. many people are fasting and actually resting, right. actually breaking right. properly. They're doing right. all these things. They're running around and stressing right. themselves out even more. Exactly. But sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 no. I, I, I actually, I really appreciate that. Um, and even, even with the sleep stuff, uh, I know I even have studies and I know you even yourself have tested your blood sugar. I never have, but like you've tested of like actually getting a full night's rest and eating fruit, testing your blood sugar, seeing what it's like. I don't know if it was like an hour after or whatever. And, um, and I think we, and like I said, there's, I have studies that show that like, if you don't get enough sleep that you're actually causing insulin resistance in your body. So it's going to be harder for your body to utilize the nutrition coming in, not even just the sugar, just all the nutrition in general coming in, you know? And I can even say I've actually had like eight hours of sleep these past two nights. And it's just like, it's just a game changer. It's just, a, it's the biggest difference, you know? And for people out there who like really, they, they want to lose weight and they want to make a big change in their, in their health and in their body and in their mind. Like, I feel like you got to start with the sleep. You know, if, if you're able to get that sleep down, your body is just going to function so much better and your, and your body is going to actually want to get rid of that waste. It's going to want to lose the weight, you know? Um, so, so the, so if you sleep better and it's not even, maybe it's not even getting more rest, but even just sleeping better and more efficiently, um, your body will utilize the nutrition coming in. It will utilize those sugars much, much better. Yeah. So I can see for people who have diabetes, I mean, sleep should be their best friend. They should be like, honey, I'm going to bed at nine. Sorry, babe. Sorry, we're not yeah. watching Netflix tonight. <laughs> sorry, we're, sorry we're not yeah. cuddling tonight. We're going to bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but even still, like recently, like I've, I've, I've lived in that, uh, that sort of like stay up late kind of lifestyle staying out, going out till two, three morning, getting like three hours of sleep some nights over the past couple of weeks. It's just, it's not fun. Like, okay, it's fun, but it's not fun in the body. You're, I'm like, you know, you're just, you're just, you're, you're like in a daze, you know? Like I would just much rather go to bed early, even if it is 10 o'clock, you know, go to bed, yeah. get enough sleep. And oh, it just makes the biggest difference, you know? So I'm not sure if you had anything to add to that. Yeah, I would say that not only does the sleep help you process and metabolize the sugar, it also influences the type of appetite that you had. And most of us have less uh, willpower when not rested so mm -hmm. to make better choices. So not only are you having worse insulin resistance, you're making worse choices mm -hmm. and it kind of spirals out from mm -hmm. there. For but sure. like, uh, let's touch on starches for a second. Oh, let's do it. I love my starch. Again, a lot of people again will be like, you know, rice makes you fat, and oh, then they'll be like, God. then you'll be like, well, what about Asians living on rice? And, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I guess you're right there, and I guess apples are healthy, and but I don't eat an apple because candy bars will make you a diabetic. And, you know, <laughs> like they think it makes sense until they start saying it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but starch, like. <laughs> literally starch is the staple of humanity oh my gosh of it, course not in a in a you know uh american diet not mm -hmm. anymore with all the processed food and everything but you know potatoes rice corn these are literal staples of beans humanity. peas lentils yeah these things let let it, it when we had the uh ability to grow these crops mm -hmm. now it wasn't like we, each person had to search for food all day. One person could provide food for 3,000 people. Yeah. And now we can 
have artists we can have people like doing other things yeah other and just scavenging and providing for the society yeah and hunting for me right right and um i actually have a really great youtube video on this on us being star travors and i know i know like i'm not i'm not here to say that we are star travors or we're frugivores or we're carnivores or whatever you know um but this guy makes some really interesting points and i know talk or er, listening to dr lyle talk about starches he says that there's the people they're in the village and um instead of going out and hunting for for meat which they didn't know if they were going to be able to do it or not they said you know what we're just gonna we're gonna grow our own food we're gonna grow the potatoes we're gonna grow the vegetables we're gonna grow the starch and um i'm not 100 percent sure the timetables of like oh it takes 30 days for a mango to grow or it takes 20 days for a potato to, to come up, you know, like I'm not hundred percent sure, but for some reason, there's something telling me that starch potatoes, rice, corn, bees, peas, lentils, there's something telling me that they grow faster than fruit does, you know? And once again, I'm not sure if that's true or not. Maybe, maybe fruit grows faster. Sure either. Um, so don't quote me on that, but, um, but I feel like a lot in these like native societies, and yes, I'm sure there's natives out there who are um, eating a lot of fruit, but I feel like most of them are doing more more starch in their diet, you know. And and um, I mean, I even have plenty of research on that as well. Um, so I mean, I uh, I do believe that um, these societies did eat eat fruit too, you know, probably probably more berries, um, strawberries, blueberries, whatever kind of berries, but. Um, I feel like a lot of them were eating more potatoes and rice and whatnot. So, um, yeah, but then I, like, go ahead. I was just going to say that I'm not sure about the growing timeline, but yeah. like how long it takes to grow. But I don't think anyone would argue that you get more satisfied generally, not everybody, but a lot of more people are going to be more satiated with potatoes. And one of the reasons McDougal actually doesn't recommend much fruit to uh, his patients is because he says they never feel satisfied and they just keep eating fruit like all day. And, right. you know, they believe in the whole calories in calories out type of thing. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, the, the deficit. So like if they're just eating endless amount, it, mm. it's problematic in these people losing weight. And, um, it's, it's interesting cause it's not that he's saying the fruit makes you fat. It's just that if you're constantly eating on top of all of your other meals because you're never satisfied, then, right. then the problem is from there. And you're going to overconsume calories is probably what they're coming at. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll even say for myself, if I have like a big meal of potatoes around like one, two o'clock, I like almost don't want to eat dinner sometimes. I'm kind of like, I'm good. You know, I'll still eat dinner. <laughs> but um, I do feel like, in the raw vegan community, so many people are just against the starch, against the potatoes. And um, they say that like, oh, you have an issue because you eat cooked food or you eat a lot of starch and rice, you know? I don't know, actually, AJ and I were talking about this earlier. Um, but I mean, if you think that, that I mean, me myself, because I, I do eat a lot of potatoes and I, have, I, I eat a lot of rice. Like if you think that, that I have an issue or I have some kind of disorder because I eat rice and potatoes. I mean, I think you have the disorder, you know, not me. There's something wrong with you because I mean, we've been eating starch for ages. So, yeah, I think that, uh, I think it does have some issue or people do have issues with starch. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe so. And I'm not trying to say that everyone should be eating tons of starch, but in an everyday person who is eating fast food, I think that they would greatly benefit from more starch. That's, oh my. Like without question. Right. Like if you're eating organic Japanese purple sweet potatoes oh my gosh, compared to troll. eating, you know, General Sal's fried chicken, like or McDonald's. It's not, you can't compare <laughs> it. Yeah, you can't compare it. But right. you know, everyone feels different, you know. So if you feel really good on fruits and vegetables or you feel really good on fruit. Don't listen to me, and I'm because I'm more about the green juice in the salad than I. <laughs> like I feel more balanced. I feel I like I'll sleep better. I feel more hydrated mm -hmm. compared to when I do lots of fruit. I I don't feel that as much. That's right. Right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. And just for myself, um. Like I could probably do, an all fruit diet for like a day, and I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't know, like. I remember Harley saying like, 
how much sugar is enough sugar? And your body's like, he's like, your body will tell you when you've had enough sugar. So it's like, I like to just eat fruit. So till I'm so I like to eat fruit until I'm like, Hey, I've had enough fruit, you know? And usually that's like two meals. Um, actually this past week, I've done like a lot of fruit juice. I've done like fruit juice in the morning and then I've done like a meal of fruit and then I'll do my dinner at night, you know? Um, but I do usually like to do two meals of fruits and then my, um, usually my starch dinner at night with a salad or something. Um, sometimes I'll do fruit, salad, starch, um, definitely more of like a raw till four type style of eating. But I mean, I don't like, I'm not, I don't get like all crazy. Like, oh my gosh, I can only eat fruit or raw till four. And then once it hits four o'clock, I'm going to be able to eat my cookies. Like, no, I don't care about that. Like yeah. just depending on my day, depending on what's on sale, depending on, um, if my fruits ripe enough, that's going to really determine on when I, when I eat, um, the certain foods, you know? Um, but yeah, even going, even okay. going back to, uh, talking about a fruit-based diet and how it can be problematic sometimes. And I was saying how you want to make sure the other areas of your life are in check so that you could fully benefit from mm -hmm. it. I think one of the things that um, makes it very difficult is the social dynamic because right. most people are going out to eat. If you have a girlfriend, like myself, like if you have a, if you're a woman or you're a guy, whatever, if you have a partner right, and they eat whatever, it's going to be very difficult and that's going to be stressful. Mm -hmm. If you get qua uh, crap quality and all you're eating is fruit that is low quality and you feel hungry all the time because you're not getting not only the sugars, but the minerals as well, because really good fruit will have the minerals. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things accumulate over the years of being a fruitarian. So like quality, fitness, hydration, fresh air, sunshine. And I feel mm -hmm. as though if you're not meeting all the needs, you're going to, you're going to have bigger issues quicker than if you really hone in on exactly, you know, what your body needs. And if you feel amazing, I have nothing to criticize you about. I'm just saying, if you're not feeling that good and you're doing it, you really should probably think about this. Yeah. AJ, thanks for saying that. And you've actually just, you've really opened my eyes and just made so much clearer for me about health just by saying, do you feel good, you know, and asking yourself the question. And, and I know it can be like, oh, well, if you eat a shit diet, it's like some people eat a, eat a shit diet and they feel amazing, you know? Well, hey, that's great to you. That's great. Awesome. But you can imagine that they're going to run, run into some issues, you know? Um, but AJ, I, I just want to just mention that. Um, but I want to get your thoughts on this. You, you're talking about fruit quality, you know? So what if you are somewhere and you want to eat like a fruit-based diet, but your fruit isn't the highest quality. You know, you kind of have like crappy fruit or you don't have enough options and maybe you are just kind of stuck eating bananas or whatnot. Um, I mean, it can be done. You can definitely do it with a lot of frozen fruits and I'm sure hopefully maybe you have juices, uh, even if even it's pasteurized and we can discuss that at, at a later time. Um, but I'm not sure what your thoughts are. I mean, I have a little, I have, I, I have, I have some... I have some, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, what I, what <laughs> like I, 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 I know what your thought, I, I feel like I have some idea what your thoughts are on, um, fruit quality, but what are your thoughts on like adding sugar to fruit if it's crappy? Uh, yeah. So yeah. So you have that, good. like you want to be a fruitarian or you want to eat more fruit, dude, but like your fruit's crap. Like, what do you do? Okay. So at first I thought you were getting at like, you know, should I be worried that the fruit isn't that good? I would say if you feel really good and you enjoy eating the fruit, those are the two most important things. But if you're just eating because you think it's healthy and it doesn't taste that good and you feel like you wish you could be eating something else, mm -hmm. it's probably not sustainable. But your question is, <laughs> well, actually, I'm really happy you answer that. That's, that's yeah, perfect. But if too. you're eating, if you're eating mediocre fruit, should you be adding sugar to the fruit <laughs> and my question is why would you be eating the fruit then just eat the right. sugar i don't know i feel i i think it's so important that the fruit it's not just sugar in the fruit sure like the calories come from that but you're eating it for all of the benefits you're eating for the antioxidants the phytochemicals and the and the nutrients and enzymes and the, the hydration minerals, and yeah. all these things right. the fiber the water whatever I feel as though if you're just, if you have something you wouldn't really want to eat, 
but then you eat it because you enhance it. I, I don't, I don't get it. I'd rather just make something else. So entirely right. Like if you if you're eating a piece of uh, steak, you know, if you're if you're eating that, or you're eating um, a potato, and they're just such crap quality, but you can add enough salt to it so that it's palatable. Would you still want to do that? I would rather the food be really good. And then if you want to enhance it from there, go for it. Right. Right. And that's why even, even in my life, I do try to eat as simple as possible and don't add as much salt or whatever to my food. You know? Yeah. I like to season my vegetables sometimes, you know, whatever. But like when I have potatoes, I don't need to add salt. Like I just eat the potatoes because they're so good. When I have Japanese sea potatoes, oh my gosh, they're just so creamy and sugary it's just it's amazing you know i mean that's one of the reasons why yeah that's one of the reasons why i do so much green juice and salads not just because of it feels good and stuff but it's always consistent yeah it's always like you can pretty much look at the lettuce and know it's going to be fresh and crisp right or you can look at the tomatoes or the avocado and tell if it's going to be right. good but with fruit i find it to be so frustrating but the thing is, when you eat a good piece of fruit, like a really, really good piece of fruit, oh, yeah. there's nothing like it. Yeah. You eat a really good banana, it's like, this is like a gourmet meal. Yeah, it's right. delicious. Right. I think these concoctions that everyone puts together as one meal, it's almost so stimulating and so like, oh my God, that it does, I don't enjoy it. I don't feel at peace when I'm eating it. I feel like I just did some drugs. Right. Um, and that's why I like eating the rice and I like eating... The potatoes is because like you just said it's gonna basically taste the same every time you know if and you like cook it exactly the right yeah. yeah the consistency is always gonna be there so that's why i like it okay but really aj really what if you're someone who like <laughs> you you really believe in the fruits and you want to eat more fruits and you know that like if you eat more fruits you're going to be healthier but what if the quality honestly is crap you know, so I know you, I know you said just why, why eat it? Like if you're going to add sugar, why eat it? But like, what if, what if you still want to eat it <laughs> and you want to add sugar to it? You know, like, is that, is that just like a personal problem then? <laughs> well, I mean, if you really you know? want it that bad and you want to add sugar to it, I would say just go for it. Right. So, so at least, okay. So you, you, you have, the, you have the fruit. Okay. So you let's, let's just use a banana. Okay. You have everything in the banana. You have the fiber, whatever. And you have the sugar. So now you have more sugar, but you still have the fiber and you have all the other, right, right. All the other stuff. I mean, it's in a different ratio. Yeah, it's, it's in a different ratio. So like, yes, we do have some fiber in there, which is a good thing. Yeah, but what if the, but what if, what if the fruit doesn't have enough sugar? What if, it, what if it honestly needs more sugar? Like, what if it's just not sweet enough? Well, then I would say that it also has not enough minerals. It also has, has not enough nutrients. Okay. It also loses all that. Plus, like, you're throwing off the ratio of hydration because now you're adding more of a dried food. You have to make sure you compensate with the right amount of water. Right. Um, but if you want to do that and you feel good doing that, I encourage it. I don't <laughs> it. It's just uh, I don't see it. So, like, when I go to the grocery store, I go to, let's say, Mom's Organic. Yeah. And I pick out an apple and it's beautiful and I bite into it. It's refreshing and it's crisp. And I'm like, this is a really enjoyable experience. If I go to, you know, ShopRite or whatever, or some kind of generic store and I get an apple that if you bit into it, it tastes like Vaseline with some moisture and it has no flavor. I'm, my first thought isn't, I'm going to go buy some sugar and add the sugar to this. Yeah, apple right. That tastes like nothing. Right. It's like, <laughs> I'll pay the extra money for the better stuff. For sure. For sure. Awesome. But what if you can't afford, what if you can't afford the better stuff? If you can't afford the, if you, if you want to eat a fruit, like more fruit in your diet and you can eat the apple, a crappy apple, <laughs> or you can add sugar to it and enjoy it. Go for it. Nice. Make some applesauce. That's <laughs> but I don't think that's the, I don't think that's like the real the right way to get about I it. I think that's just like yeah. a little cheap hack thing. Right. Right. Now, would you, I'm so, I, I'm still on this. I'm so, I'm, I'm loving this right now. Um, but now would you say that'd be a little different for an athlete then, you know? Um, yeah, I think everything changes. Yeah. It's like if, if you're, if you're more, like if you're running, if you're biking, if you're doing this and you're doing that, like you definitely think that there's more of a difference. Especially 
with something like cycling. Oh yeah. Cycling is like the biggest one to where you're going to be burning so much fuel. You could just keep adding it in. And when you're adding it, when you're adding it in that way, you're burning it. It's clean. Yeah. The problem is when things are festering. If you sit on the couch all day and you're mm-hmm. loading up on the sugar and it's just you're peeing like crazy, you're triggering right. fight or flight and right. inflammation. That's a problem. Now, some people will say the fit people will say, well, you have to add the sugar so that you have the energy to go do the exercise. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. where do you begin? Where do you end? Sometimes yeah, but that's most, true. Sometimes that's not true. Right. But like, like I was saying, I don't know. We've, we've been talking about an hour probably, but like I was saying probably maybe 45 minutes ago, most people aren't eating a diet of like fruit. So even if they are adding sugar to their meals, they're not like adding sugar to fruit. They're just eating other crap, you know? Right. Um, but I do think Harley makes a good point on this where it's like, you see a lot of people in a cycling community and they're doing those gels or they're doing whatever there's like yeah. little packets. It's not like, it's just sugar. And he's like, he's like, if you're going to do that, just put, just put sugar in water and drink that instead, you know, but then That's Harley does, I Harley agree. does say, he says, have one bottle of sugar water and then have one bottle of water. And then when you drink the sugar water, also drink the water after to like help clean out the sugar in the mouth. So it's not just, so it doesn't just ruin your teeth, you know? Um, so yeah. That's some good stuff right there, AJ. Really good stuff. Um, there was one more. Go ahead. No, you're good. No, there was there was there was one more statement I wanted to make. There was something else I want to say on those on that topic, and I uh, or what, might have been a question. I'm not sure, but if I remember it, I'll I'll let you know. So, um, but actually, if you guys are interested in seeing more about like what physicians have to say about sugar, I think a good place to go is watch uh, the doc- documentary "What the Health." They really go into like sugar metabolism and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So on, cool. they have it on Netflix. That's, that's what you watch, right? Because yeah, yeah. That's that, that's actually the documentary I watched that made me go vegan. <laughs> yeah. so that's a good place to start. I would check that out. Yeah, I would check out uh, Robbie mastering diabetes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can put the links below. Yeah, P- pretty easy to do. Yeah. Um, my takeaway would be uh, the healthier you are, the better you're going to metabolize whatever you're eating. So it's always a good idea to do some exercise. It's always a good idea to stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. You're going to process the sugars even better if you're hydrated. And if you're well rested, your hormones and everything's going to work properly so that, again, you can metabolize sugars. Nice. I don't think you have to be afraid of sugars. I think that they could be part of a very, very healthy diet, mm-hmm. whether it be starch, fruit, possibly even adding some refined sugar. <laughs> I don't feel good on it. I don't recommend it. But... There's a misconception that donuts, the only reason they're bad is because of sugar. And I would say right. there's a there's a list of reasons why they're bad. Right. Don't just take it as like all or nothing. Really include healthier food in general. Like mm-hmm. think, is, it, is this food healthy? That's what I would include. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah, AJ, thanks for saying that. And you know what? I actually remember what I was going to say. So um, when you were talking about uh, cycling and like actually using those sugars while you're cycling – comparing that to people who are just like sitting on a, on a chair watching TV or on their couch, you know, um, I've actually heard, uh, cycling, not experts, but like just people in the cycling community talk about like, Oh, you can actually get low blood sugar because you are like cycling and doing too much, you know? And then I feel like the people who are just sitting around all day and they're not doing anything and they're just eating lots of sugar, maybe they really actually are just having high blood sugar and the sugar is just staying in their blood and not being utilized. Whereas if you actually go out and utilize um, the sugars by biking, by working out, by doing this and doing that, your body can just take the sugar out of the blood and actually use it as fuel, you know? Yeah. I mean, when you get to a certain point of fitness, you can literally eat whatever you want and burn it. That right. doesn't mean that, you know, the food is always healthy, especially for the people who are having health challenges. Mm-hmm. I don't think we'd be recommending jelly beans and Starburst. Yeah, totally. To people who have diabetes just because sugar may not be the, the main problem. Totally. But yeah, if you're a certain level of fitness, you can, you can load up on pretty much anything. <laughs> totally. Awesome. Well, AJ, did you have uh, any more closing thoughts on episode six here? Uh, discussing sugar. 
I know you actually closed. Good. Yeah, I think you yeah. actually closed up there about two minutes ago. So, um, yeah. great job. Uh, my closing thoughts are: if you are scared of sugar, then cool, that's fine. Stay away from it. But um, I do believe that you can eat in a way where you can have sugar, um, and you can enjoy it in in a healthy way. And even if that does mean leaving out certain foods, um, but I don't believe that you should be scared of sugar and afraid of sugar. I've actually changed my life eating more fruit, more potatoes, more rice, fruit more is vegetables. Healthy. Um, Starch in general is good yeah, for you. Yeah. I would say that. So I, uh, I say most people's problem is the really bad garbage. For sure. For sure. So for me, with, with a combination of deep sleep, eight hours or more if possible, hydrating with water and eating a diet based around fruits, vegetables, rice, corn, potatoes, bees, peas, lentils, and uh, salads and some fat for sure. I eat fat for sure. Yeah, me too. I like to, I like to indulge in some good avocado, you know, um, man, I feel good when I do it, when all three are together, when I get my sleep down, when I get my water in and my nutrition's on point, man, do I feel damn good. And I bring that good energy. I bring it, baby, but I'll bring it regardless. You know? sure. yeah. yeah. So, um, just, uh, if you are afraid, reach out to us and we'd love to talk to you. Um, clear up some thoughts, clear up some, uh, negative thoughts you have on sugar. So yeah, um, this, this actually concludes the sleep, water, sugar discussion yeah. we're having here on the podcast. Exactly. So stay tuned to see what's next. We're yeah. Really diving into a lot more topics for you guys. Yeah. So, uh, sleep, water, sugar, a great foundation for your health. Um, probably in every episode, we're still going to be talking about sleep, water, sugar in this, in this episode, we talked about sleep, talked about hydration, you know, um, but we do have a lot of great episodes coming up. So, uh, stay tuned. And, uh, if you got this far, thank you so much for listening to the hungry people podcast episode six on sugar. Uh, let us know any, uh, comments, questions, thoughts you have DM us on Instagram. Let us know on the YouTube channel. And, uh, we'd love to hear from you anyways. Uh, my name is brew brew, or you can call me Michael Patrick. That's my actual name, but I just want to say, stay up, be great. And always give it a hundred baby. Stay hungry.